Okay, so continuing solving a system of equations algebraically, this one is about being able to solve a system of equations by using elimination. And what we have in this picture is you've got matter meeting antimatter, and whenever they come together, they touch each other, they annihilate each other. So I have a plus and I have a minus. They're exact opposites. They annihilate each other when they come together. And that's what you do with elimination, okay? So let's look at this on exercise five. Add the two equations together to solve this system, okay? If I look at these two equations, if I just add them together, whoa, let's uh, clean that up a little bit. Okay, if I add them together, you can see that the y's here are exact opposites. It's so like the matter and the antimatter, when I add them together, they're going to disappear. They're going to annihilate. It's not going to be any kind of explosion or anything. They're just going to disappear. They're gone. Okay? And uh, I get 5x is equal to 15. A very simple equation that I can solve for the other variable because I've eliminated y. Okay? So I'll divide both sides by 5, and I get x is equal to 3. Okay? Am I done? Now stick that back into one of the original equations. Let's stick it into this bottom one since y is positive. I'd have uh, 3 times 3 plus y is equal to 7. 9 plus y equals 7. Subtract the 9 over so y is equal to a negative 2. Write your answer as an ordered pair, 3, negative 2. Okay, so that one, I've just solved it by using elimination. Sure, this would have been pretty easy to do by substitution, but elimination was even faster because the numbers were already opposite. It's not always going to be the case, but if it is, try to do it by elimination. Okay, so using the elimination method, you're trying to eliminate, you're trying to get rid of one of the variables by either adding or subtracting the equations. Okay, sometimes it's not quite that simple though. Take a look at the two equations that I have right up here, this system. Okay, in this system here, if I just added up my x's and my y's, I added my two equations, nothing would eliminate. So what would you have to do to this system first so that something would get eliminated? Well, what I'd have to do, well, the easiest thing since the x's, one is positive and one's negative, I would have to multiply the x's by something so that this 2 becomes an 8. We want them the same number except for opposites. It's kind of like getting common denominator. Okay, so I would just have to multiply this thing by 4, and when I do, those coefficients would match up. I could also multiply by something to get the y's to disappear, but this one was just easier just because one was positive and one was negative. Okay, so let's solve this system of equations then also using elimination. Okay, solve this one using elimination. What we said is, it's going to be easiest if I just multiply the second equation by 4. Okay, so the top equation will stay the same. Let's just bring it down. 8x plus 2y equals 4. And then multiply everything in the bottom equation by 4. I'd have a negative 8x plus 4 times 3 is 12x, 12y. And uh, 13 times 4, that'd be 40, 52, 52. Okay. Now let's add them up. X's will cancel because they're opposites. We'd have 14y is equal to 56 when I add them. So let's divide by 14. Divide by 14. And y is equal to, uh, I think that goes in there four times. I'm going to say y equals 4. Then finally, let's solve this thing for uh, x. So maybe I put it in this top equation. It makes no difference which one you do. How about 8x plus 2 times 4 is equal to 4. 8x plus 8 is equal to 4. Subtract it over. 8x equals negative 4. x equals negative a half. Hmm. All right. It's kind of got a funny feeling when it came out with a number like that, but it was right, yeah. So negative a half comma four is our point of intersection. It is the solution to our consistent, our independent consistent system, right? Right, okay.
So sometimes, since you have to multiply one or both of the equations by something in order to be able to eliminate one of the variables, we also call this linear combination. If you're going to take, um, say, a, a matrix class in college, it's part of, usually it's part of either a math degree or a computer science degree, they have to do it too. Um, they call it a linear combination. This is elimination, but you are multiplying one or both of the equations by something in order to get rid of one of the variables. Okay, so in this process, step one, multiply one or all the equations by some constant in order to get rid of one of the variables. You want one to be positive, you want one to be negative. You want them to be exact opposites. They differ only by sign, okay? And then, just add those two new equations. The ones that are opposite are gonna eliminate. They're gonna disappear. And I'm just left with one variable, okay? And then finally, I'm gonna take that value that I got in that previous step, step two, I'm gonna substitute that back into one of the original equations to get to solve for the final variable, okay? All right, so let's do, you wanna you want do another one? Let's do another one, okay? Okay, so let's solve this system of equations. Again, let's solve this thing by elimination. And I can see that, hey, nothing is exact opposites, so I'm gonna have to multiply the top or the bottom by something. And I'm gonna use the fact that the top one's positive and the bottom one's negative to work with the y's. This bottom one's a negative nine, so I need the other one to be a nine if I can, and I can if I just multiply it by three. So my new equations are 9x plus uh, 9y is equal to negative 45, okay? And on the bottom one, it stays the same, so 5x minus 9y is equal to a 3. Okay, let's add these equations together. My x's combine to make 14x's. Those disappear, they're eliminated and I get negative 42. Divide, x is gonna go in there a negative three times. Okay, so there's my x value. Let's find the y value. And I'm actually gonna go back to the original equation here because the number's a little smaller rather than using the one that's multiplied by three. I could stick it into one of any of those and I should still get the, the same exact y value. So how about three times a negative three? 3y equals negative 15. That's a negative 9 plus 3y equals negative 15. Add the 9 over. 3y equals negative 6, so y is negative 2. Okay, so my final answer, negative 3, negative 2. Okay, I bet you're wanting an opportunity to do one on your own. Of course you are. So uh, try this one. See, this one might be a little bit trickier. Maybe you have to multiply both equations by something in order to get one of the variables to eliminate. So give that a try. All right, uh, what's your point of intersection? What did you get for the answer? Did you get this one? 11 comma four. Okay, so taking, taking you through the process, um, I chose to eliminate the x's because first of all, they were opposites and they were smaller numbers than the y's. The y's were opposite, but their numbers were actually larger. So if I multiply by something to get rid of the x's, my coefficients are all gonna be a little bit smaller, might be a little easier to work with. Okay, so I multiply the top equation by four, and there it's, there's its new one. I multiply the bottom equation by three, there's its new one. Add the two equations together, eliminates the x's, and I get y equals four. Take the four, stick it into, say, the top equation for y, and solve and I get x equals 11. So for this independent consistent system, we get the solution 11 comma four. Okay, so here's just a thought question. Given a system of equations, any system of equations, it's just right there on, the, on your paper and it says solve this system of equations. How could you tell which algebraic method would be the most advantageous? Which one's gonna be the easiest to do? Think about it for just a second here. How would I know when to do substitution versus, say, elimination? Okay, so I, I would do substitution only if it's convenient, meaning that the leading coefficient with one of the variables is either a positive or a negative one. 
because then I could get x by itself or y by itself very easily and I wouldn't have to worry about fractions. Not that fractions are bad, it's just that first of all they cause some people anxiety which leads to some mistakes and it's easier to work with integers, it's faster to anyway. So if one of the leading coefficients is not one or negative one, just use elimination, okay? All right, so here are three of them for you to attempt to solve. When I say attempt, because uh, there, there might be a couple of tricky things that might happen, I want you to see that happen as you solve these. All right, let's take a look at the answers on these three problems. See the weird things that sometimes happen. So uh, the first one, it was most convenient to solve this one by substitution because y, leading coefficient of 1, is easy to just add the 4x over. Substitute 4x plus 3 in for y in the top equation. I solve it, and, or I try to solve it, and I get a statement like negative 9 equals negative 9. Well, negative 9 is equal to negative 9. That is a true statement. And this is what I will see if I have infinitely many solutions. If when I'm solving a system of equations and I get a true statement at the end, like the x's cancel and I have a true statement, I'm going to say it's infinitely many solutions. Remember what this means is that one of the equations is just basically the same as the other one. It's a multiple of the other one. If you multiply the bottom equation by negative 3, you will see that it's the same thing as the top equation. If you notice that right off the bat, you can go straight to the answer saying that it's infinitely many solutions. Okay, number two, it was most convenient to do elimination because you didn't have a leading coefficient of one. And then I chose uh, this, the x's because six is a multiple of negative two. You just multiply the bottom equation by three. So whenever you go to do this, not only do the x's cancel, but the y's cancel too, leaving you with zero equals 15. Well, zero is not equal to 15. That's a false statement. So if you solve a system of equations and your x's cancel, leaving you with a false statement at the end, you're going to say that there is no solution. Remember what this means is that these have the same slope. They're parallel to each other. They're parallel. They never touch in each other. There's no solution. Okay. The third one, also most convenient to do by elimination. I multiplied the top equation by a 2 and the bottom equation by a 9 since the y's had opposite signs. And uh, you actually get one solution. This one is an independent consistent system. I get the solution 3, negative 1. Nothing funny happened. So let me recap that. The two funny things that happen happen as a result of your x's cancel. If your x's cancel and you get a true statement at the end, you know you have infinitely many solutions. If your x's cancel and you get a false statement at the end, you have no solution. It's an inconsistent system. Okay, the last video is just taking you through some extra problems, maybe some word problems, SAT problems that use system of equations in them.